<laughs> to come in here and rough people up. So I'm gonna have to fuck people up, man. But welcome to Talk Smack with Mac Josh, man. I appreciate you pulling up, man. It's, the more I'm getting to know about you, the more interested I am. I'm like, oh man, man. Tomorrow, he fucks with the Lakers, man. He's making fucking music. He's talking music with Kyle downstairs, making movies and shit. I told you about my little story I wrote, man, and. I was like, yeah, I fuck with this dude. I fuck with you. But welcome to Talk Smack with Mac. Man, Mac, I appreciate it, dude. That's exactly how I feel. Like, the talks that we just had, I'm like, yo, man, you're really talented. Oh, In I all appreciate fields of what you, you do, you're, you go 100%. And I also want to say, man, thank you for serving our nation. I really oh, man, I appreciate my heart, you. Yeah. Man, no, thank you, man. That that That's something I really respect, man. Yeah, for sure. I had, a, I had a good time. It was some fucked up times. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of fucked up times in there, man, where it got a little... It got a little scary and shit. You know, the pool is just different. You know, going yeah. through training and getting that, in that pool. You know, I tell my friends all the time, I was like, when you're working out, if you get tired, stop and breathe. In that motherfucking water, there ain't no stopping and breathing. You got <laughs> you gotta figure it the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? It gets scary doing that shit. But, uh, shit, no, man. great times, That's, though, man. Great times. Great yeah. times. Great times. I was very fortunate to... Get to travel and see different things, get different perspectives on life, help mold me into who I am, you know, now. So I'm very fortunate. You know, though, all those early mornings and ass kickings and shit like that, and it's all good. It's but all it, good. exactly, it's a part of the character building. It's yeah. not something that you yeah. regret or hate. It's mm-hmm. like, it's a part of like, you know what? I don't got to do it no more, but I'm happy I went through it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Man. I was a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was a piece of shit, man. Like, I was, I was doing it. I had a good heart, but I was doing some fucked up shit. And I was like, I got to get up out of here. And it really whipped me into shape and, and opened up the door for me to pursue what I want to pursue and give myself the confidence that I can't do what I want to do. And the insight, like what you said, like the script that you just wrote, it's dope because of the elements that you can add that a lot of people can't even fathom. Yes, man. It's uh, uh, incredible. Feelings. Feelings. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing about writing in life is that you everybody's going to go through shit. Yeah. Everybody's going to be able to feel emotions. Like if but if you can somehow center yourself when you're going through certain emotions so you can remember why you were feeling that way, you can really channel that shit in writing. Uh, exactly. You can have your characters go through similar situations because you know that emotion is going to arise, right? And then your writing can start getting pretty gangster. Oh, man. And so it's funny that you say that uh, one of the things that I do with my, my writing is like... Uh, I'll go through an emotion and I'll be like hot. Like I'll be mad for some reason. It's mm-hmm. unusual that I'm going through this emotion. And I'm like, let me write down everything this emotion feels like right here. Mm-hmm. And it's just pocketed. So then in the future, if I got a character, it's like how they're supposed to feel. Boom. This is all the emotion, like all the different points that I was feeling that day and why and what caused it. And what was the tipping point? What was the last straw? Nice. But it's, it's dope because it's the reaction. That's the most human thing that we have to offer mm-hmm. is just how we react to everything. Mm-hmm. And, and doing that on film is hard, bro. Oh, man, yeah. Like, it, it, you, could, you could know the game all you want, but when it comes to how your body reacts, how you're, like, for me, how my eyebrows react, <laughs> if they got a mind of their own, all of that, like, makes a difference whether somebody's going to say, you're full of fucking shit or good job. Yeah. So it's it's hard, <laughs> but in, especially like trying to um, force this reaction. You know what I mean for the character in that moment, because you could because be just it's coming the from the unknown versus it's coming from a real place. Exactly, mm-hmm. exactly. Because right now you're in the middle of laughing, you're just uh, shooting the shit with everybody. You start to make friends with everybody on set, and then they're like action. Now you got to be pissed off, and you got to snap into it. And it's it's hard to just channel back and forth between that reaction. Mm-hmm. Especially if the emotions are drastically different. Say you're having a fucking fucked up day. Yeah. You're like, God damn, everything fucking wrong is going on today. And now I got to go be all fucking, like we were talking about before, bubbly and fucking all yeah. happy on set. What if I just found out my wife was just banging three other dudes in <laughs> my bed, bro? In my yeah. fucking bed that I paid for while I was off filming the movie. Then I come home, she fucks me in the same bed, I find out. Now I got to go to work and be fucking the comedy guy? Ooh, that comedy's going to be real dark today. Exactly. Like, so, yeah, yeah, being able to be a real human being and then still tap into a completely different emotion, it could be tough as fuck. But, you know, and um, if you got, like, the reminder, it's like, okay, this is my one safe spot to just have a happy face. 
You know what I mean? Like, it, it might be the smallest thing that's just dumb to you. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's the only way you're going to forget the, you know what I mean? Like, the, the gang <laughs> bang that just went on in the house. <laughs> You got a whole yeah. OnlyFans going down yeah. in your it's sleeping spot. Oh, use like, my what? camera and what? shit. <laughs> she used that motherfucking camera. Set up like, my tripod. Ha-ha. But Turn on my fucking talk that, back <laughs> light. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> this bitch. <laughs> That's for Bruno Mars channel. It's like, this, this bitch, bitch got, me, <laughs> but got me about to cut a hoe. <laughs> shit, you better get the fuck away. <laughs> but So... Um, it, you gotta have something on both ends like the one thing that can just jump you in the anger or the one thing that can just jump you in the happiness of that like mm-hmm. that extra push mm-hmm. you know what I mean like that Dom Toretto Nas like at the end of it like you know <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> you got a quarter yeah. mile left it's like <laughs> yeah. I live more like one quarter mile out of time <laughs> <laughs> oh man so you do a lot man you write you act you fucking do music like Tell me about all of that. What did uh, you get into first? So um, I've been doing acting for a while, since sixth grade. So when I was... Um, you from Vegas? Uh, so I'm from California originally. Sorry. So I came from California. My family moved out here. So middle school, I was in Vegas. Mm-hmm. And so I finished out high school, and I've been in Vegas ever since. What school but did you go to? For uh, high Las school? Vegas people judging right now. Like, Oh, yeah. No, I'm a Vista nigga, man. Like, it's oh. like Sierra Vista. Okay. And... Okay. Um, but you know, shout out to everybody, man. I I, I don't know about basic, but <laughs> I'm, I'm like, it's like, oh man, no, but no, I, no I everybody up, got school rivalries. I lived man. right like, across the street from basic up until I was like six. Did you go to basic? Hell no, I was oh, six. So, they, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, it's funny. The furthest school I went to was uh, elementary. I went to Sandy Searles Miller, and that's off of Lake Mead. But then everything else was like in the Spring Valley area. So I went to mm-hmm. Lawrence for middle school and then I went to Sierra Vista for high school. But I remember the beats we had with Desert Oasis and shit, like the uh, pranks we were pulling on the school, like when they first came out. Um, shit, man, I feel old. But we like, they. I'm a little old. Yeah, we getting there. It's that- <laughs> all good. We got wisdom and experience, bitch. Ex- Let's man, go. Exactly. Fuck y'all young kids. We, we did some shit. Like they. um. They planted a tree in our football field at the, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> in the right, middle, right in the middle. They because like, <laughs> it usually got that crack right there where it starts fucking up. Yeah, oh, so they planted hilarious. a tree right there, like so. It's Someone's like, about to tear ACL or fucking break a knee or some shit, <laughs> ruin careers. But <man. laughs> yeah, taking an ankle out, a little stuff. <laughs> fuck, imagine you fucking just going fast as fuck, kick return, man. You're running for your fucking life. You got them in high school. 200, 210 pound, <laughs> maybe 165 pound motherfucker that runs a four or five coming at you. You're running for your life out there. Oh, yeah. And you, you, oh, you're about to take it to the house and bah, you hit that little fucking stub. You're about to do a whole ass front flip probably two times, tumble. Right. Fucking pulled your whole hip out of socket like Bo Jackson and shit. Oh, shit. That's fucked up. How, yeah. So how big did it get they, before you no, guys got, pulled that shit? They, um, so they didn't notice it for like a full like two years. Oh, like, shit. so <laughs> the school wasn't on top of it. So like, there's a dead spot. I don't know if it My got... story was true as <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Exactly, like that's what I'm saying. People like oh, people sh- tore ACLs running through the middle, like so everybody knew when they played on our field, you couldn't cut through the middle. So everybody, <laughs> they knew you just ran hey, a straight the post that, the whole hey, time. The whole city knew, and they still didn't fix that shit. <laughs> they said, "Man, just let that shit go, man." <laughs> so, but maybe they trip on it enough, he'll rip it out. Yeah, no, our, our baseball assholes. field was impeccable, though. But like, our, <laughs> was, the, was the baseball team good? Oh no! A lot of people uh, made to MLB from our uh, from our years. At that CFC. were uh, what's his name? Bryce, what's his name? Went. Uh, no, I don't know about Bryce. Uh, I know Jake Hager. Uh, he played for the Mariners. He's over there. He was okay. at Vista. Okay. And then uh, like, I ain't go up there. I would have been that- <laughs> cocking that bitch and throwing everybody out. I would have played whatever position they needed. Man. We we had a pitcher when I was playing on our football team that was became our quarterback because we didn't have nobody. So they're like, he got an arm. Could he did it transition well? Um, so he was fine until like he started getting hit. You know what I mean? Oh, yep. That's why he we didn't have baseball. an offensive line. Mm. So we're out there and um, he mentally checked out quick. Huh? Oh yeah, he was at, like the uh, the coach, the baseball coach pulled him out. Like yo, oh, you gotta yeah. go, bro. Like, He's like man, you're gonna break your whole shit. Yeah, 
He was he wasn't playing that shit, and he was even like, "I don't even have an offensive line. I got a squiggle." It's like, uh, it's like everybody's busted. It, was it one of them scenarios where like all the other high schools D lines were just look like super kids? And yeah, then you got like we got fucking, Broly's, I and mean, we're <laughs> Krillins. Like yeah. just got, <laughs> your fucking left guard is five six, but he lifts weights real hard. He's yeah. fucking like one eighty five solid. No, our, our guys, man, we. Um, the tall guys were, they were lean and then the, uh, shorter guys were a little bit stockier, but we were still playing against some, we're playing against Bishop Gorman, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's like, not fair. Yeah, and we, like, Gorman Fuck gets, them. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, cool that they were, were repping, you know, uh, uh, number one high school in the country for a while, had that yeah. little rain. Cool, it was cool for the city. Putting the, basically saying, we got talent in the city, right? Yeah. But with that being said, man, fuck them. If it comes to playing them big ass oh, super fucking man. They, what they do is just pluck all the super kids from yeah. all the schools in the city. Say, let's go make a real high school team. So our high school some we, real Texas shit. Our senior year, uh, we beat them in basketball, but we didn't get to go to uh nationals, but we just beat them in state. Mm -hmm. And that was enough for us. Like as oh, long as we yeah. fucking beat Gorman. And you can I, say that for the rest of your life. Oh, exactly. Oh, we be Gorman. I, wait, I'm saying it today. Like, <laughs> fuck y'all. Like, it's <laughs> but no, like, did you play? Uh, I didn't play. Oh. I was in the stands. <laughs> I, I, that's how mad he I said, was. I'm <laughs> still holding that shit dear to my heart, baby. <laughs> shit. But yeah, yeah but I shaved my head. I um, I put a giant SV in my hair. You shaved and, it like my shit? Or no, you, oh no, um, you I did put like a one or a two. No, I, I shaved the letters SV for Oh shit. Okay, I got you. I got you. And then I dyed it blue. Like yeah, we went hard. Like we was we was in it for that. It depends. Like, cheer your ass <laughs> off. Oh, you'll die for that shit at that at, at that, that moment. Seventeen in time. year old me. Yeah, yeah like, <laughs> I'm about the Sierra Vista shit. Like uh, yeah, we was we was it. That's uh, the year that um, so me and um, a few other guys we started something called the Blue Crew, where we got everybody from all the different teams, from the baseball team, basketball team, football team, the theater department. Um, I was in theater at the time. So, like, and then we got tracked. Everybody, we'd all go support everybody's events. Nice. Like, collectively, nice. the dope. rest of that's us. Dope. And so they still do it to this day. It's called the Blue Crew. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's year of this thing. So, like, that was our first year of it. So we was all in. That shit is important. Yeah. You know, when it when you, when you do it to, like, the lesser, not really paid attention shit, it, it matters a lot. Oh, yeah, man. It really brings highlight because everything, every event has, like, some... Like, people prepared for that shit. They bust right. their ass for that shit. They deserve people to watch. It feels good to be watched. It, it, it feels good to get that recognition, especially at that age. Man, and then that support. So we're all there, and then everybody else is asking, what you doing? Yo, you know we all going to be here. So now you've got a group that went from 30 to 50, 50 to 70. Mm -hmm. And it it's just infectious. builds up. Man, and it was great. So it just became... It wasn't even a question. What you guys doing Friday night? Yo, oh, like, know. the we're, football we're team is about to be yeah. playing. Like, we're going to be there. going crazy. Even if it's an away game, we all going to go pull up. Uh, so, like, that was, that's it was that great. That's rich kid shit. <laughs> yeah, we would have been like, man, it's like three buses to get over there, bro. Oh, I, don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm trying to do that shit. The game starts at 8. I would have to leave at, like, 5, 4.30. Oh, it's going to be hot. Fuck. But, but we was in a smooth pocket. Like, we wasn't going, like, to the prompt games. Like, we're not... Yeah. Go. No, I'm talking about down the street around the corner, oh, dog. So like, <laughs> it's a struggle over here. <laughs> Don't let the house fool you. I didn't came a long way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm talking about around the corner. Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shit, it's man. a long ass walk. Look, we like, damn, man. Like for me, like, damn, that's a long ass walk, but I could do it. I always be like, walk, what? How the fuck you talking? It's like five miles. I like walking, man. I, there was a time I walked all the way from um, Stratosphere mm -hmm. all the way to the house. So Oof. so my house yeah. at the time was off of um, 215 in Rainbow Area. Uh -huh. So it's a, it Oof. took like a smooth six, seven hours to walk <laughs> that whole thing. <laughs> Wait, but, but how old were you? Were you sober? I, no, I drank along the way. Like oh, I was, shit. Like, I was made like, an event out like, of it. Like yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm bar you, hopping. You did some real. Oh, you was bar like, hopping. Like on the way while I'm walking. You know what I mean? That's so hard. like I see like they got they're selling alcohol in front of the Mirage. All right, I buy a beer mm -hmm. and then I'm walking all the way over. Okay, I'm passing by um, mm -hmm. Paris now. Let me That's get a really shot. It sounds kind of fun. Like, right, exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't drink like that, but shit, I would if I was doing that. It was a smooth Making walk, it, man. Yeah, you need an event. Yeah, I like to be active. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Now that 
is uh, that's a distance. That's a, <laughs> I'll never do it again, but <laughs> I, it's just something to say I it's did. It's just like some it, things you got to experience one yeah. time. I I totally understand, man. I totally get it. So uh, so you got into acting first. You were doing it in middle school. Oh my bad. Yeah, high shit, school. I went way off. But. So no, you good, man. You you good. You good. Good conversations. Good conversation. So uh, did you continue right out of high school to continue to act? Um, no. So I had a son um, when I was 17. So fresh out of high school, he was born. Mm -hmm. And so after that, I just went into just working. And what I felt was easier at the time frame was if I balance music and with working, I can record whenever. It's not like trying to memorize the script and then being committed to the hours. I can still have a full-time job. Were you always into music? Yeah, I was always, I, I used to DJ at 15. Oh, so nice, I was DJing. Nice. So you had that love for music. Yeah, and, and so I got to perform a few songs that I wrote in high school. And then, oh, and I also did battle rap uh, for A Hat rap battles out here for Shit. a little bit. That's pretty dope. So I'd pull yeah. up there. Um, I know the gas station be doing some some pretty dope shit. Oh, the man. Battle scene. The, the, there's a few different scenes that we got out here in Vegas now. It's just blooming. At the time, it was just two. Yeah. So, um, it's, it's great to just see it keep progressing, and there was um there's a lot of different artists that we've seen in that time frame that was just blooming and just blossoming, and um, I was happy to just be a part of that. And then from there, I didn't record a song yet, so I had to wait to um after high school is when I started really recording. Had a few different groups, and just started recording professionally within uh. 22. I think 21, 22 is when I really started recording professionally. And then so about just marketing. four years. Four yeah. years of just trial and error, getting better, learning the process. Yeah. 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 So I went through, I went through some shit with it, but, um, shit, man, it, that's, it was, it's part of it. <laughs> it's my favorite part now. Like I look back and I laugh at it. If I find any of the old tracks now, I laugh. Mm -hmm. But, um, after that, it just started blossoming. It, like I, I said, it just kept going. And, um, there was a song that I did called Petty Coco, and that one... Petty Coco. It went, that one went viral for a sec, and it was dope nice. to see that. That's I just fire. woke up, my phone just ding, 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 ding. I was like, all right, cool. Like, I'm this waiting is, for that. Yes. Let me get some of that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it felt good. and um, But then you start realizing, like, okay, a lot of this is up to chance, man. Mm -hmm. A lot of this is... So you got to stay dedicated you got to stay vigilant at all times and just keep doing what you're doing because you never know which one is going to be the one that just boom yeah. and everything just, you know, happens. And and while it's happening, you got to be prepared to just keep it going. But um, that was the music aspect. And so after that, I was like, that was cool. Like, I was like, I want to just dive back into movies and films and acting. That's my main thing I wanted to mm -hmm. do. So this is the time right now. So we just started just cranking out a bunch of scripts now cranking out films going and um you're part of one of the films man so i appreciate that <laughs> hey, 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 hey. might have to you know let this right hand fly a few times in this bitch who knows who knows who knows stay tuned baby stay tuned yeah. no that was a dope ass experience man i really appreciate you guys giving me that opportunity and uh gaming me up you know like i told gary i appreciate him you know when you could game somebody up and help them level up and get better. It's all, it, it should always be appreciated. Right. Uh, and that, man, that's just helping the game go. You know what right. I'm saying? Uh, so I, I appreciate you guys for that. And being on set was a good ass time. It was comfortable. You know, yeah. you, can, you can pull up to some sets and you just feel kind of uncomfortable. And uh, it wasn't like that with you guys. It was just talking shit, talking shit, having a good time, man. Everybody felt like they knew each other for mm -hmm. years. It's, it fucking yeah. seemed like it. Right. It, it seemed, if you would have told me that, all of y'all were best friends, like it, to the extras. I would believe it. Like it really seemed like that. That like I, yeah. I don't know if you guys are, but that's what it seemed like. Man, and, and a lot of us just really started meeting each other just within a few months of this year. Like, oh, dope. So that's it's dope. it's not even that long yeah. that a lot of us have known each other, mm -hmm. and the way that everybody just you know blended. And um, Jordan, um, the guy that had this on mm -hmm. his face, so he. Um, he was, was one of my close friends. He was in that video for Petty Coco. He was dressed as Deadpool. And he's just, he's an actor. He's a method actor. He gets deep in the character. We did a few different projects together. Yeah, no, he's phenomenal, bro. Uh, his, his reactions uh, to the punches yeah. made me look phenomenal. Like, people, people, like, don't understand that it takes two. 
It takes yes. two to make somebody yeah. look good, and he fucking. I feel from what I've seen, he made me look phenomenal. So shout out to Jordan. Oh man, it, it was like a dance. So you mm-hmm. guys are just both going together and. Keep in mind, this wasn't really rehearsed. Like, you guys At just all. went into it. It's like, hey, man, I'm going to fuck you up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, all right, cool. <laughs> you jumped out the car and just ran into it. And it was at a point where it was like the first take that you guys did, that was the one I recorded on the phone from afar. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this looks like a fight. Like, this yeah. looks like somebody just got beat the fuck up on the street. If, if we post that, it's like, it'll go viral. Right. Yeah, for sure. Right. <laughs> and it was, but that was the energy. That was that connection. And mm-hmm. it's dope. Um, once you got that and you can see, okay, I'm reading him. I see his shoulder dip this way. All right, bam. Mm-hmm. And it's, you know what I mean? It's almost like wrestling, like uh, yeah. professional wrestling. You know what I mean? And when you have that natural... Uh, connection with somebody yeah it's fucking awesome right it's, it was, it's awesome and it makes the job so much easier oh so man much easier. yeah it was, so yeah i'm excited to see how it turns out exactly man, man. it's gonna be dope yeah it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be pretty dope. pretty dope man uh so what what you got coming next um so i got the track that's gonna be dropping on september 1st oh um, yes talk about with that. benny the butcher that's lab and the um, butcher's coming, baby. Butcher coming, nigga. Yeah, that's. Like, we, yeah, you know I can't say the whole thing, <laughs> but. <laughs> but um, so he's um he's real dope. He I met him last year on the set of the Super Plug music video, and um we got the chop in, and then months later, once I had the chance to be able to do a song with him, I was like, okay, bet, let's do this. And just been sitting on the song for months. So now it's finally coming out. It's going to be kind of the announcement for my project that I'm going to be doing on the 25th of September. Uh, but, man, we're going to hear first on motherfucking Talk Smack with Mac. That's right. So, yeah, hey, that's, facts. that's facts. That's facts, man. man. I love it when that happens. Yeah, oh, of course, man. And it's um, it's a, it's a long time coming, and I've just been excited. And it's a dope song, and I feel like he snapped on it, and I'm proud of myself on it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I think that a lot of people are going to enjoy it. Yeah. They're going to really enjoy it. So I'm I'm interested to see the the connection between you guys and the chemistry on the track. Oh, yeah. How y'all flow together, right? So Friday, yeah, man, I'm going to check that shit out. Uh, I'm going to have to... uh, Damn, I might have to leapfrog this podcast, man, because by the time this shit drops, the song will be out already. Okay, bet. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, go check that shit out. Yeah, I bet you it's hard it as fuck, it's, man. Uh, that, that shit, shit is thing. hella good. <laughs> 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 that shit is fire as fuck. <laughs> I brushed my se- teeth to that shit this morning. <laughs> Since fucking September 1st, I've been bumping that motherfucking shit. <laughs> no, I'm gonna check it out, man. I'm excited no, to sure, check that sure, shit out. Yes. So, I noticed uh, when I was uh, doing a very shallow dive on your Instagram, like I think most of us males do, it's like... Yeah. Instagram, oh shit, okay, oh what the fuck, Freddy Krueger, that's what happened to me. Yeah, <laughs> I said, what the fuck, that- Freddy Krueger, because I got, you know, I got the horses. I'm a horror that's guy. Hard. That's hard. Yeah, um, I looked at the video. I was like, damn, this video is fire as fuck. I was like, damn, it makes sense. When when did uh, when did you do those videos? When did you shoot that all those video videos? Was done, uh, and that's Jordan and all the shit. That was Jordan. That yeah, was I, Freddy Krueger. Yeah. So that was done November last year, okay. and then um, that's the loss. So of all, all of this is video. pretty recent. Uh, so so a lot of it's kind of been spread, but uh, so we got different videos where they got prosthetics and makeup in it. Mm-hmm. And for that one, that was the Lost It All one. He's dressed as Freddy Krueger. That was the horror theme. And I was like, mm-hmm. I just want to do like basically a mini horror film. That's gangster. And oh man, I wish I was there for that shit. That shit, man. I bet you that would have been fire. It was, man. it was, it was dope, man. We tried to recreate as much of the elements of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street theme, mm-hmm. and um. I'm a big um, cinema guy. Like, mm-hmm. I love movies. So we did The Mask before that. And that's when um, I put on basically, like, The Mask. I put on the outfit, and then I did the whole green face. And, did you um, say smoking, like I, Jim Carrey said? I shit? did. It didn't get smoking. recorded. But it's, <laughs> smoking. Yeah. It's party time. P-A-R-T-Y. Because I got to. Yeah. Man, I... It was fun. I got to do costume contests as it. And then, so I, I made like $2,000 from costume contests Damn. dressed as him. It was. That's pretty badass. Fucking yeah. happy, man. Paid for everything. That man, I uh, I bought out bars like when we were there. I was like, fuck it. Like everybody, like, <laughs> just, I mean, like, it's like, just, that's, it was just the dope. moment of it. Like, yeah. just having fun. 
um the we did some other elements too where it's just constantly like uh there was a transporter theme but anything that's going to be captivating that entertains you know what i mean mm -hmm. i don't know if it's just because i'm hot but i'm gonna pull the camera over just a little bit oh no go for it go for it <laughs> <You see? laughs> i thought you seen a ghost i, was like, <laughs> I mean probably <laughs> Get you more in the frame, you know. Okay, my blocking was off just a bit. Hey, y'all good, y'all good. The was... mini director in me was like, "Man, go fix that shit. Get my boy that whole frame that he needs." Man, appreciate. It. Yeah, no. So yeah, no, that's fire as fuck. I like to be in certain situations and certain sets and certain settings, yeah. depending on what you're doing. The vibe is everything, and for to be in a horror vi uh, like horror scenario would be dope for the Freddy Krueger shit, and then the mask. As you just saw, I'm a big fan of The Mask, man. I feel like most 90s kids are yeah. fans of The Mask. So, you yeah, know, that's pretty dope, man. I see you're, you're doing big things. Who was a part of the crew for those videos outside of Jordan? So, um, the director was CM Deluxe. So, he's done a, a bunch of videos in Las Vegas. Um, he's done some videos for Filthy Rich and a few other artists. And um, he did the Super Plug video for Filthy Rich. Uh, sorry, for Benny the Butcher. Mm -hmm. So that's I was on set for that with him. Um, yeah, that's how you say you met him, yeah. 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 Now for the video that we did to Freddy Krueger, that was actually funny because Jordan came up there dressed up, and then we ran out the spot, and the actors and people that we had they all bailed out at the last second. That's how it usually happens. And so we're just standing, and he's just dressed up. And there's a video that I got of him, and he's on the phone. And he's like, "Hey, I'd appreciate it if you come by. I'm Freddy right now." Um, and so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that shit is hilarious, He's got bro. the fucking claws on and everything. And we're trying to find somebody. And so I said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Just come in the bar with me. He goes, what? I said, yeah, mm -hmm. just come to the bar. And we walk into this bar. It's the square bar. So this is right by the green door. This is... Mm -hmm. so, yeah, oh, this like is, Sahara and some shit. Yeah, like over there. this is in the shit. Like, yeah. so, <laughs> so he's dressed as Freddy Krueger there. <laughs> So, That's excellent. There's homeless people walking by. Like, yeah, the like, what the fuck is going on? It's come to this. <laughs> I've reached this fucking point. Well, this rock. Bar. The shrooms are fucking me up right now. <laughs> but I know that motherfucker's Freddy Krueger. <laughs> I'm uh, telling you, that motherfucker's not real. <laughs> <laughs> Did anybody scream at you? You're not real. <laughs> You're not fucking real. <laughs> So we walk into the bar and it's like, again, Halloween already passed. So it's just November. It's just like, mm -hmm. no, um, <laughs> you're late. <too. laughs> no, I think it's before. Yeah, no, it's November because it's after Halloween. So we go in the bar and walk up and everybody's just like sitting there and people are like whispering to each other. And I go, OK, we're going to see whoever's the most engaged. And then mm -hmm. we see like this couple like looking and like they're pointing and they're still like pointing. They're tapping each other, they're looking and like they want to take a picture. I'm like, bet, you guys going to be in the music video. Is that cool with you guys? I was like, you guys want to make $100 each? Cool. I was and like, hell yeah, let's like, go. <laughs> How long you need me? <laughs> Do I get to kick his ass and shit? And he just, they just came in, and um, they were they were so incredibly dope. And they um, they were only in there for like 30 minutes for the acting nice. scene. It's $200 and, an hour, man. Man. That, oh, shit. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I forgot to turn off Rick and Morty. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. You say Two hundred dollars an hour. What the devil love? <laughs> Perfect time and shit. But no. Um, so it was it was incredible to just be able to have people that are just down. Like you know what I mean. Like you see other people. We got lucky in that in that situation. Basically, mm -hmm. you know. Um, there's a few times that's just been like that where. The right people who were around. There was a video that we did. Um, everybody just kind of pulled out finger guns, like, mm -hmm. and they just bang, bang, and we just all fall and act like we die. And we did that in a um, hookah lounge, and a lot of people just were just showed up. And, mm -hmm. All right, I need this, this, and this. Are you guys down for this? You guys down? And everybody just happened to be down, and it was just. That's how it usually happens, man. You'd be surprised how willing people are. Just because they're a part of something. Yeah. They're like, fuck yeah, man. I just want to be a part of it. Right. That's what happened on set, you know, uh, 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 when we were f uh, finishing up. Yes, yeah. With the uh, two extra dudes, right? Yeah, like, we got yeah, two extras. You, you think your boyfriend come on? 
Man, fuck it, I'll do it. <laughs> man, I'll do that shit. I, man, I was thankful. What the one dude said, hey, man, man, y'all making a movie? Shit, I can dance. <laughs> I can dance if you need me. And then sure enough, about 45 minutes goes by. He was like, man, where's that motherfucker that can dance? We, we need him. Yes, exactly. Exactly. He walked up and said that. And we didn't even know it was going to be needed yet. Mm-hmm. Then an hour, like 45 minutes to an hour goes by. And it's like, yo, Marvel, that's your chance, man. Come on. Yeah. And he, he pulled up and he just did it. And it was it was dope. How, that was uh, awesome. Man, and it was even down like we were like, all right, we got to redo the order. It's not going to be boom, 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 boom. You guys stand mm-hmm. here in line. We got to. And I, I keep thinking about like when we did the take, one of the takes that I really liked, and then right behind you, Jack jumps out. <laughs> <laughs> little boy. <laughs> he said, there's a little kid right behind you. Because <laughs> you guys are in the uh, moment. I was, I was like, damn, <laughs> man. As I, I, as I like looked at my peripheral, he's just staring out the window. <laughs> I was like, there ain't supposed to be no one in the house one. <laughs> sure in the fuck, not no five-year-old kid or whatever. <laughs> he jumped out. He ju- so you and Gary are standing next to each other. He jumped out right in between you guys first. And he just did, like, he looked like it was the Titan. He jumped out and he flexed. And then he jumped back by the window and just stared out the window. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm looking that We got to get that on the bloopers for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Bring your kid to work day. (laughs) That's going to be the title. He wanted a shot in the film. He got it. cut. (laughs) (laughs) I've been on set with some some cameramen that were pretty passionate, I'll say. Yeah. And yeah, he he would have he would have got very passionate during that situation. Who who the fuck's kids is this? (laughs) Get the fucking kid out of here. I'm trying to shoot a masterpiece right now. I, I, so I usually, I try to be understand with everything whenever we're on set, but I remember like my first music video I ever did, I snapped on the, on the director that we had, the camera guy. And it was because like we're in there and it's a hookah lounge and it's like, it's packed. It's like, you know, 150 people. And it's like, all right, we're going to play this song twice back to back and that's going to be your shot, shots to get the club scene. That's it. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. And we go and we do it. We got a whole line dance. Everybody's there. It's like, it looks great. We get done. And the guy's sitting there smoking hookah. The camera's like, oh, man, that was dope. I wish I would have got that. I'm like, what the fuck what are the you fuck doing? What the fuck are you doing? Like, yeah, <laughs> your job is like, to get that. <laughs> Why the fuck and you smoke that shit after? Motherfucker, do your job. He gets up. He's doing it halfway. And then I realize he got the lens cap on. Oh. And so I snap. Everybody it. has a bad day, though. The, I, he had I get a horrible it. day. Yeah, and, I, I totally understand. It's hard to... Gather your emotions during those situations because it seems on the outside looking in that you're just an unprepared piece of shit. I, but I mean, maybe he's really good and he's just having one of them days. We're still friends and he. It was one told of them days. Me, he was like, yo, you made me quit directing. I was oh, like, oh, damn. Was like, <laughs> hey, but hey. I was like, if it was going to keep going that way, it's a good thing. Like, how so deep like, was he into it? No, true, true, true. Was, he, was he new to it still? No, he was new to it. So like, All right, so yeah, you so got I him was, out of something he didn't really want to do. Exactly. Like, yeah. So I was like, it wasn't that much investment. But like, so we laugh about it now. But I was just like, damn, dude. Like, I felt bad. because, But I'm like, that's the time I always <laughs> think about. Like, that's the most I ever went off. Like, I pulled him outside. I was like, yo, I'm not even going to cut you out in front of everybody. I'm going to pull you outside. Like, they're like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, like, you got funny, paid. Man. You sitting there smoking a hookah. Like, smoking a hookah. <laughs> and you're the director. Right, bro, <laughs> talking about, you. I wish I would have got that. <laughs> <laughs> and Eric, oh, boy. And <laughs> it was funny, man. That Yeah. But after that, like, I tried to keep everything cool. There was, oh, no, there was actually one other director, a different film that we were doing. This was a TV show. And the director was, like, walking through the water, and he's filming. And it's like, yo, like, okay, what you doing? Like, you know, this you filming the wrong shit. Like, mm-hmm. this is just people who, like, B-roll shit. <laughs> and, like, they're actually talking. They're mic'd up over here. And he's like, don't tell me how to do my shit. I was like, all right. <laughs> so, I, I feel it, though. I, feel I, felt it. It. I left him alone. I said, all right. And then, like, he said, that's a wrap. I said, yo, you ain't, you ain't getting nothing. <laughs> you just filming ass. That's what it is. You filming thongs. Like, you, bro, like, you missed the whole You shooting shit. the wrong shit, man. You shooting the wrong video right now. Your mind is in a different he's place. Like, I'm good. <laughs> he said, this is from my personal archive. Shit. But, yeah. I'm going to call this thong in the swamp. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
bro. That was the only yeah. time I yelled because I was like, bro, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, this isn't it. Like, you missed the whole shit. We missed the sunset. <laughs> the, like, the sun dropped. This is a pool scene. We missed every damn thing we supposed to do. The be homie here for. said, I'm about to look at this ass <laughs> for four hours. Man, I don't know what happened, dog. <laughs> just like got memorized on that crack. Have, have a reshoot. <laughs> Next thing I know, the motherfucking sun went down. Like I'm like, <laughs> trying to perfect it, you know, the angle. Oh, yeah, man, that man. was just like, yeah, I can't work with you no more, bro. But, but everybody I work with, man, is really, really professional. Those are the only two incidences. But every uh, a good balance. Like, there's people out there that's very professional, but they're like overly professional. Yeah. Why are you eating on set? It's like, man, we got 10 minutes in between the scene. I'm about to give me a little snack in real quick. Motherfucker's hungry. I, need, I ain't going to fuck nothing up, I promise. Right. I'm fucking I'll put on a white glove. Relax. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. <laughs> like, I'm dirty already. Don't even trip. I came here like this. Fuck. And then there's other people where it's like, yeah, man, go ahead and, you know, get a little bite of pizza in real quick. Right. Don't get your shit all greasy, of course. You know, be cognizant of what the fuck you're doing. But it's a different... Different type of professional. There's more people that are anal, and then there's people that are more relaxed. Well, it, so I think one thing that's this is biggest, time being for both, though. Right. Like, there's yeah. continuity that's always going to be a big thing. If you're going to mm-hmm. fuck up the continuity, because, okay, right now, you go and take a few shots in between takes. Now you look all fucked up in between takes. We, mm-hmm. can't, we can't blend it together anymore. And Or um, if you, you get all dirty because you're eating the pizza, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? But if you're responsible, you're an adult, you just handle it on your own, there's no problem right there. Mm -hmm. But you got to fucking handle it as an adult, though. Right, exactly. And I feel like there probably are a lot of people that aren't really paying attention. And if you have, like, a little grease stain on your shirt that you didn't even notice, the camera's going to pick it up. Right. But if you have that mindset, I guess everybody doesn't have that mindset. (laughs) It's just being conscious of your own actions, you know what I mean? Of everything. Right. Where are you touching? Where are you, where are you eating? Are you eating over yourself? All that shit. And it, it's dope when you're on a set and everybody's like, Don't hold eat nacho on. cheese Doritos and shit. You Man, know? and you can check your partner and be like, yo, like you got some cheese right on the back of your shorts. Mm. Or, Police yeah. each other up, bro. For right, sure. man. Yeah. Hey, you didn't have the cup here. The cup was here in this shot. You got to mm-hmm. adjust and do et cetera. But the, the small shit actually brings the whole film together. Yeah, because if not, if, if you have, say, hour and a feature film, hour and a half, right? Yeah. And you have three, three mess ups, one every 30 minutes. That doesn't really seem like a lot. That's a fucking lot, man. Yeah. That's a lot. Everybody's going to pick that up and that's going to be in the back of their mind the entire time. I remember when the Frito bag was like this and then the Frito bag was upside down when they came back. It sticks out like a sore thumb. Look at Game of Thrones, the moment that they Ooh, had that Starbucks, Starbucks cup. Starbucks cup. That shit. Or Negan with his cell phone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like all of that You're shit. Right. That's costing y'all millions of dollars. Millions of dollars because now, it's some, something simple. Sometimes it works because that's free marketing also in some cases. I, if everybody's like, I'm going to check out the episode just to see the Starbucks cup. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, yeah. How much money did you get from viewership and advertisement? Or how was viewership uh, uh, affected? And how was marketing and advertisement based on people that have came just because of the cup? Yeah. If yeah. removing the cup was ten million dollars, but we have now made twenty five million dollars because of the cup, did we fuck up? Oh man, that, that and can now be, you can you can be the can be only dirty. one that has the clip that's on YouTube, and now you're getting stream counts in it because you got the only clip with the cup in it because you removed it off of everything else. Oh yeah, go watch the Starbucks cup in Game of Thrones. One billion views. Right, shit. Smart. That's smart, man. Hey, I guess you can make a dollar from almost anything. The way it's about perspective, how you look at things. Right. You can shoot yourself in the foot and, you know, just fucking bitch and complain about it. Oh, or it's you a can risk. figure it out. Right. You can figure it out and do something with it. It's hard. It's hard, though. It's like you, to be able to have that mindset when there's big money involved. Oh, yeah. That's when it starts, I'm sure it starts to get a little jittery and shit. It's like, eh, imagine making a, like a, a DC movie. Oh, and yeah. you just lost $200 million because the movie flopped. You're going to go fucking sit in the fucking basement <laughs> with no lights on and the windows shut and a bottle of alcohol for about a week. Right. And contemplate life. Like, I was just I'm watching. never probably going to get another job again. <laughs> I was watching You're The Flash. You're making TV after that, dog. Shit, bro. Like, I, watching Flash, like, it felt like that. I was like, this movie, I can see where it was going. I can see where they fucked up the different parts of it. 
But somebody's crying at home over the results of this shit because they lost so much money on it. Like, She-Hulk fucked up a lot of shit. There's a lot of these different projects that's going on right now. And it's like, you just jump in to the big dog seat. And it's like, fuck, like, you can't fuck this up. Mm-hmm. And That's a lot of pressure. Man. Like, especially, like, to go from, like, there's some people where they're, their first directing job and it, the budget is astronomical for what I'm accustomed to. Right. Like, say, hey, yeah, this is my first job and we have a... Two million dollar budget. That ain't shit. Movies really two million motherfucking dollars. I'll oh, be yeah, scared shit. as shit. <laughs> I'll be like, holy fuck, this has to be fucking perfect. You right. ain't eating the fucking Cheetos in between takes on this motherfucker. <laughs> you ain't allowed to eat shit. That's when I need the the anal motherfuckers. Right. Come right. put this shit down and make this shit work because uh I'm a shit on myself if it doesn't two billion dollars. Right. No, that's true. Because now you want to make sure that the return is guaranteed. Mm-hmm. And if any small thing fucks that up, oh, there wasn't a chemistry here, or, oh, the production team was mad because there was a lot of delays because, you know, this person kept fucking up the outfit. All right, no, no more eating. We're going to cut all that mm-hmm. shit yep. out. You know what I mean? Yep. No more breaks. Everybody's going to stay here. We're getting hotels. Everybody's going to stay in the area. So some of I the understand. When the budgets sense. start getting up there, that's when I totally understand the right. like, crazy shit. But if you a little extra on the side and your job is to eat pizza, yeah, come on, take bro. a bite of that motherfucking pizza. You know? <laughs> this is my pizza. Go, go ahead, get another one. <laughs> shit, you know, shit, make it look real. Yeah, <laughs> man, and it's every single part. It's a it's a full moving engine. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And the camera, like we said before, the camera picks up everything. So every that's one thing that I love about film is that it takes a collective to be in unison at the same time for a time period, right? Uh, uh, that you know is gonna vary, but everybody has to be perfect, right? And you're gonna do it over and over until it's perfect, or so they think it's perfect, or they have enough to make it perfect. So it's. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times, if you got a lot of money uh, attached to some shit, you gonna motherfucking get a lot of takes. I need yeah. options. So exactly. your hair was fucked up in this one. Everything was perfect, but bitch, your hair fell over your eye just a little bit. But, your eye sells. So you start getting some takes where you can hear about where they're like, okay, they spent one million dollars to do the CGI on this girl's oh, hair. Remove the hair out of her eye for and a million. It's like, why? Fuck! The- <laughs> But the take was so perfect. Yeah. And it's like she did this is a million dollar shot. We gotta we gotta put the money This is it. a million dollar shot, man. Go ahead and get Jerry from fucking uh uh R and D and get on it, man. He's gonna research and develop a new plug in yeah. for Final Cut Pro to remove her hair from her eyeball Specifically, right now. Specifically frame by frame. We need it in three weeks, Jerry. Million dollars, make it happen. Hey, and that's when Jerry makes a thug decision. Hey kids. <laughs> so I, see you guys in a few weeks yeah for real i'm sleeping at the studio but when, when i come back and when i do <laughs> i'm gonna have some green things with me and we about to go on vacation baby yeah, let me man. go and let this fucking let me go innovate i'll be back <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly but, and that's a great work schedule if you could do that you know what i mean oh fuck yeah but when they start just that's a lot back of pressure to back, to back to back to back oh, you got that pressure exactly mm-hmm. how much how much pressure are you willing to deal with in order to make a certain amount of money where do you want to be yeah because if you want millions you have to put in that time and that effort like, that's that's a big cost there's gonna be a lot of pressure on it, it it's, too it's not like what we see on social media where these motherfuckers are like, I work, I was financially free at 23. Yeah. You know, I have 17 houses and a yacht. You know, all I did was this. It ain't like that. <laughs> it, it, it's not even like that for them because, like, a lot of times, man, you'll find out they have endorsements that clear them of they that, tell that, that of, amount. You yeah. know what I mean? And if they lose that endorsement, now you Just hear drop them they down don't substantially. Anymore. Right. Yeah. That's how you can hear influencers. You're like, yo, I remember they had millions, and now they're just they don't got anything. They the the ups and downs in this shit is crazy. It's like a stock market. Mm-hmm. That everybody's got a plan. They all got a whole marketing scheme that goes behind something. The reason why GameStop, that stock shit that just went through, and um, do you remember that? Like a yeah, few years ago, bullshit, yeah, that by shit, the way. man. I because I I hate so. <laughs> Two years before that shit happened, I'm like, man, I'll never buy GameStop. I fucking hate GameStop. 
I think GameStop is a scam, man. They've been getting all of us our whole life. I don't believe in the business, so I'm not going to invest in it, right? Right. 60 cents a video game. It, I bought this shit for fucking $32, exactly. man, yesterday. <laughs> right. I beat it in a day. This game sucks. The storyline was three hours long, man. Let me return this and shit. And they look at you like, yeah, Nine cents. Nine cents and we'll give you a game informer. Get the yeah. fuck out of here, <laughs> game games. <laughs> fucking GameStop. <laughs> fuck y'all, man. So the stock, you know, with COVID and shit, that dropped. That shit dropped down. I think it was like seven bucks or some shit. Yeah. And then, yo, what did it go up to? Like two fifty? It was. It was, so was twenty three dollars, and it jumped up to three hundred, uh, or it jumped to like four thirty. So That's crazy. I remember um, I was on Reddit, and there was like this stock group that I was a part of, and I was like, all right. I was trying to get into that shit. I was too late. Man, I, I woke up at 3 Did you in the get morning. in? Did no, you? I didn't get in because oh. I went back to sleep. So Damn. I, so I went to the restroom. I'm walking over there, and then I see my phone, and like, you know, like that half-sleep walk? And then there's just like everybody's blowing up, and they're talking about, hey, buying the AMC, buying the GameStop, buying the AMC, buying the GameStop. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right. Oh, and, I got some AMC. Oh shit! See, yeah, I got some of that because I fuck with movies. Now I'm in. So right now, um, I just bought into the Mattel one. Mm-hmm. That's the next one that's about to blow is Mattel, and I'm telling everybody, what's the ticket, man? Right now, I think it's tw- between twenty and thirty dollars per share. But you got to peep because they got the uh, they just dropped the Barbie movie. Yeah, and this is about to close out for that quarter coming up. So now they're about to change with the Raiders. That Barbie movie made so much money. Man, okay, so keep in mind, this is still Good twenty Margo, to thirty dollars a share right now. Exactly, and My future she, wife, she got that investment. <laughs> she got that investment in it. And, yeah, um, she's making like hundreds of million dollars, I believe. She took money on the back end of it. Yeah, it, it was it was money. estimated there were like fifty million, and then like a week or two passed, and there was like it's way more than that. <laughs> right, that's how man. That's what a lot her. of these Marvel actors started to try to do too. They're like, "Yo, I want to take the the full amount." Yeah, of money. You have to. That's why you have to. Because if you take this movie, you spend four hundred, five hundred million dollars, which they do. It's a yep. huge risk, huge gamble. That's why. But if you make you a billion mad. and a half, you have profited. Say after you know you pay out everybody, you didn't profited seven hundred fifty million dollars, and you talking about you can't give me fifty? I was the main motherfucker in here. Right. I'm Captain America, bitch. Give me 50. <laughs> Remember when he got five and Robert Downey Jr. got, got like 50 or 70? But Robert Downey Jr. was holding right. the cast together. He was holding, because he knew he could have dipped but out. Five? I get it. It's a big difference, but there's so. Five was almost the amount to br- remove the fucking hair from the so, girl's <laughs> eyes. He was in the scene the whole fucking time. <laughs> but you got, Fuck. so like Terrence Howard was making more than him on the first film. You said so, Ter- Terrence Howard was? Yeah, yeah so that's, that's why, why he got he nixed. They was like, man, we can, we ain't about to pay, uh, uh, what's his name? Brody. No, uh, Brody. yeah, but was it uh, Iron Machine was his name? Uh, War Machine. Ma- War Machine. Yeah, yeah. We ain't going to pay War Machine more than Iron Man. Right. This shit don't make sense because Robert Downey, if you get 50, Terrence is going to get 80. They well, had he to was make the bigger it. name at the time. Yeah. So, like, he was making a lot more. And I don't even think Robert was getting anywhere in the um, double digits in the millions, I think. Still like single digits in the millions for, mm-hmm. for the first one. For the first one, mm-hmm. and a lot of that was improv. I, the first movie, yeah. So they I didn't really have a script for it. Fuck. So if you pay attention, rewatch. Oh, it. I remember. Like, um, I, I think I see a video or uh, I saw a video on Facebook with Kevin Feige, and he yeah. was talking about man, we were like rewriting shit and telling right. them when they're in the cave, like all of that was like right. They were improv on the spot, sure. and yeah. They, so you can see Damn, a lot of pressure it is. You can see Robert Downey Jr.'s face in the first one where he's, like, just going. Mm-hmm. And everybody, like, he's kind of feeding them. He's like, all right, you always kind of do this shit. You know what? I'm about to go have another drink. And everybody's response is kind of like, another drink? Like, everybody's response to Tony Stark throughout the movie is questions. Mm-hmm. They're just asking him the same thing he just said. Like, so re-watching it, no one's like, oh, shit. Like, he's, like, carrying the whole scene. Mm-hmm. So yeah. It, <laughs> And he holds together the glue for the MCU. So, yeah, he's going to get paid the most after all. I can dig it. I, I mean, he was phenomenal, too. And then, yeah. Man, let's, let's talk about that. Before we talk about the meat and potatoes for a touch on basketball, but I, I do want to talk about the future of Marvel. Because yes, for the first time in a while, I'm excited. Yeah. Like, it's been dry as fuck. Yeah. Like, it's just been so much, you know, supply is too high, bro. I'm not buying into this shit. It's just too much. But then Deadpool 3 came, and shit got fucking interesting. Yeah. 
when you throw my guy Hugh Jackman in there, yeah. and he's gonna be fucking up Deadpool, and it's rated R. Logan was already phenomenal. Yeah. If you add Ryan Reynolds Deadpool to that, and then others, for which we don't know, it has the makings of being phenomenal. Ah, no, this, this. But even later on. To like 2027, 2028, Secret Wars. Yes. Imagine you have yes. everybody from Endgame because people can now come back to life because of the multiverse. Now the multiverse is at stake. Kane is coming, he's fucking people up. Multiverse is at stake. So you're pulling everybody. So you're getting Wolverine, maybe different iterations of Wolverine. So we're going to get Hugh Jackman in that. Maybe different uh, iterations of Hulk. You're going to have Red Hulk. You're going to have Green Hulk. You're going to have fucking uh, uh, maybe both. Captain America's, well, you, maybe uh, Chris Evans comes back. We don't know. Just for that fight, you're going to have three Spider-Mans. What if you have Venom? What if you have Venom in that? It's going to be crazy. But I really like to see. So on two separate. I feel like more notes. people have to die. Exactly. So, okay. So bad. three points. They I'm have to give. die bad. The one I'm going to say is I really hope that they just dive into letting the actors play multiple iterations. So, like. Chris Evans is going to mm -hmm. be Human Doubling Torch. Up. He can oh, be, yes. That would be great. He could be Human That'd Torch, be and he could be Captain America. <clears throat> I think he might be Human Torch in Deadpool, in Deadpool 3. So they're bringing everybody from the mm -hmm. Fox universe in that. So everybody from the Fantastic Four is back. They also brought Nicolas Cage back from Columbia Pictures when yes, he was Ghost for Rider. for Ghost Rider, yes. And um, they also got uh, Daredevil. Uh, ben Affleck came back to do Daredevil again. That's funny, Jennifer bro. Jennifer Gardner, she's back to for do Electra. Uh, Electra, yes. Like, See, it has to make it to be... That's, the nostalgic feeling that you can get from this movie is yeah. going to be reminiscent of Spider-Man, uh, the, the, the third No Way one. Home. No yeah. Way Home, which was incredible. But this is going to be grimier, man, for but the man, motherfuckers you, like me that like that, let me stab you in your fucking face and watch on, the man, blood splatter. Get, I like, like the, that shit. The first Deadpool that you got when he just blasts three motherfuckers right in the head. Yeah, dude, dude, dude. I need that. It, it's just dope. Like, or, that's or, that shit. Or Logan, when he's really, can really unleash the Wolverine. Oh, yeah. No, that when scene it's really, in the desert with him and his daughter, when they're just taking legs off and then just going ham. It's it's amazing, bro, because it's, it's real. It's not this facade that America puts on to, to make money in yeah. which we do in so many different things so many different ways no give me that real shit what is gonna happen if this motherfucker he has antimantium going through his body he's full of anger and rage and he's strong as fuck you don't think he's gonna slice somebody's fucking face off right let me see that don't be cheap and don't be trying to chase the dollar chase the product Put a good movie out, and that's what Logan was. Exactly. And Deadpool three and can do the same gonna thing. They're going to be bringing it like you got him dressed in the full Wolverine outfit. Mm -hmm. He's in the, the, the yellow, yellow and the blue, yeah. Shit, man. From our from when we was kids, kids. Exactly. Yeah. That shit is dope, man. I'm excited for it. And um, I Deadpool is my favorite comic book character of all time. But he's just talking shit. He's and then you got Blade. Blade is one of Blade, my Blade man. I, I wish it Blade, was Wesley. Yeah. What if Wesley comes back for Secret that's Wars? That's what I'm about to say. I the possibilities see Wesley are. Pop up. I, I'll fucking lose my shit. Yeah. Imagine him just out there, just fucking letting it rip he, with a pistol or something. He some started shit. this whole superhero shit, man. Everybody because, has to thank Wesley yeah. Snipes because not only did yeah. he bring popularity to Marvel comic book heroes, it was also R rated and he made it successful and yeah. made a lot of millions of dollars. Because. Before that, you just had, like, the Michael Keaton Batman films. You know what I mean? Yeah. There wasn't really anything in George cinema. Clooney. Come on, the, the bat nipples. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, Arnold, Arnold as the Iceman and oh, shit. Oh, shit. That shit was awful. It was yeah. like, what I used to watch it a lot as a kid, the too. Ice Age. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's excellent, Every man. line is so fucking stupid. I died of a cold heart. It's like just stupid shit. But it was... It, yeah, it's horrible. But it's so horrible. then you got Blade. For a six-year-old, is fire, though. Oh, man, yeah. I was like, ah, I didn't freeze that. Cause <laughs> I, I used to watch on ESPN, The World's Strongest Man, all the time. And yeah, then it, yeah. Like, I was, I was big into that shit at a young age. So I'm like, Arnold is the Iceman. He was my hero. I'm watching Commando and shit all the time. Watching him blow shit up and, and fuck shit up. And then I'm like, George Clooney. I fuck with Dust Till Dawn, my, yeah. one of my favorites. Dust Till Dawn's the shit. I was shit. like, man, this the shit. I turned about 12 years old, tried to watch it again. I was like, damn, man, this ain't as good as I remember. Now Bro. as an adult, I could only fucking imagine how horrible it but is. But you hear the cast, and the cast will really fuck you up mentally. It's like <laughs> you got Arnold Schwarzenegger, 
you got Uma Thurman from Kill Bill. It's like, Poison oh, shit. Ivy, yeah. Like, if you hear that now, you never seen it. It's like, yo, let me peep this, this movie. This has the makings of being one of the greatest things ever made. But that's th the same shit it's like with Shark Tale. Like, if you hear just the cast, mm -hmm. and it's like, Shark yo. Shark Tale was all right, bro. No, I like Shark yeah. Tale, but I'm saying, like, it is misleading if you hear, like, yo, it's a Martin Scorsese film, and it's got Will Smith killing yeah. a mob boss's son, and it's Robert <laughs> De Niro. And his side chick is Angelina Jolie. That's and phenomenal, like, yeah. You're like, that's yo, I'm going to check this movie out, but it's a cartoon. You see some fish swimming around and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> Lost all the pearls on the fucking races, <laughs> on the horse races. 5,000 clams, like, nigga, what we watching? <laughs> yeah, man, but, but no, hey, will you... <laughs> And it's like, That's yo. That's excellent. And it's like, yo, Jack Black is the son, but like he's on the down low, but no one knows. So like he's got to hide from the family because he can't be the leader because he's secretly, you know. He ain't trying to do that. He, he don't want to do that shit. He don't want to be a shark. He's only just trying to live he a chill life. He not want to be a shark. <laughs> I'm and, a shark, dad, but I ain't trying to be it, man. Bob Marley's son in here beating Will Smith up. It's like, oh, shit. Like, I got to see this movie. <laughs> I'm going to go watch it again just for that description. <laughs> oh, that's excellent, bro. Hey, man, let's jump over, man. You're a basketball guy. Yeah. You're a Laker fan. So am I. So we're going to have possibly a lot of the same opinions. Yes. But one thing I want to touch, with you, touch, uh, touch on with you before you dip out of here is Austin Reeves. Uh, the Lakers, they have done... You know, we haven't had a lot of first-round picks in the last handful of years or so. But the undrafted guys and the guys in, in the second round that they get and late in the first round, anytime we have a pick, that pick is maximized. It's tried and true. The scouting department is phenomenal. Um, they know who to get. Just look at the guys around the league. Look at it. We have, like, five guys on the fucking U.S. team right now, former Lakers. Yeah. Austin Reeves, we see you could visibly watch his ascension last year, game by game. It was phenomenal. Some guys go down. Uh, bronze hurt. Delos hurt. We need a ball handler. He just takes over and he doesn't stop. He literally was the little engine that could that made it possible for Bron to come back from that injury because he put us in a position to make the playoffs. Yeah, you take him to this summer on the USA team, Grant Hill. And Steve Kerr gives him a chance, gives him an opportunity. He's shocked. He's like, damn, I didn't think y'all was going to give me a chance. Right. Because a lot of star, superstar players that sat out this year, it did give them that chance. And ever since I was a kid watching, I was really wa waking up and watching that 08 Olympics. It was spectacular. You could watch every person that goes to the Olympics, they ascend as a player. And we are, I think we are watching Austin Reeves ascend and take that next level as he's becoming the glue to the USA team. They got guys on that team like Jalen Brunson. You got Anthony Edwards, who's going to be a fucking superstar. Yeah. You got uh, uh, Tyrese Halliburton, you know, Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart, a lot of these guys, Jaron Jackson Jr., a lot of young fucking great guys on this team. You get to create a future. He's closing these games. He may not be starting, but he's closing. He's second in points per game. Leads him in double. His assist per game is double what the second guy is. And he's rebounding too. He's going out. I think he was the first person that's ever, or that's put up a 15, 5, and 5 game in the Olympics since like Braun in a, a long ass time ago or some shit. Yeah. He, he's doing, he, he, he's showing that total package. How do you feel about Austin Reeves? So I was seeing recently when he was discussing the comparison to say, um, I forgot what year it was with Jordan, when Jordan sat out during the Olympics, during mm -hmm. the Olympics game. And to, who took his spot? Um, In 96? Yeah, I think it was 96. Mm -hmm. so, and so he was saying, like, this was his moment to shine who without Bron. I, no, I'm saying I didn't remember. Oh, who this the, I, probably Charles Barkley, maybe? I don't, I don't think it was Barkley. No. But he's saying um, it was – so someone else got to shine after that because mm -hmm. once Jordan was out, you got another player. That was yeah, the spotlight shine. is now moved to somebody else. Right. So yeah. it's like now this was the time where Bron was out and now he gets to shine. Plus he gets to go underneath with the leadership of Steve Kerr, like you said. So Steve mm -hmm. Kerr is an, a phenomenal coach. That's a, it's a different perspective. And right. Eric Spolster too, right? Right. It's look at that coaching staff. You're getting the heat culture and you're getting the dy dynasty culture. It, Steve Kerr is one of the most accomplished NBA players of all time, player coach. 
so he's I tell people all the time I'm like Phil Jackson my favorite coach and then after that Steve Kerr is second over Pop over Popovich, I'm going to say personally for me, yeah. I'm going to say Steve Kerr because he's got a lot of ego that he's yeah, also balancing fuck the with. Spurs, man. So, <laughs> but yeah, like Steve Kerr all day over Pop. Steve Kerr has, like, for example, if you think about the ego that he has to deal with where he's got Draymond, he's got Steph Curry, he's got Clay, and he's got to make sure to keep everybody's head leveled mm-hmm. and still have everybody respect him. Mm-hmm. The reason why you can't have Mike Brown trying to coach Kobe Bryant, it's not going to happen. Like He's not mm-hmm. going to have that respect level. So... To have Reeves underneath Steve Kerr in that moment and to be like, yo, this is a different way. Like, this is a different perspective. This is mm-hmm. how I see it. He's going to, yeah, different perspective, pointing things out in different ways, different ways to attack the game. Exactly. Approaches everything. Like, uh, you could, he could break it down to, like, uh, tempo. Yeah. You know, when to speed up, when to slow down. Austin Reeves is one hell of a guy at uh, drawing the defense in and getting fouled. Right. It's phenomenal. We watched that last year. I was like, uh, I was like, when's this bullshit gonna stop? And it never fucking stopped, bro. He was getting like two, three, four, and ones every game. It seemed like. But you got some times where people start heating up, and it could just be for a moment, like you know, like Deladova had his shine moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then after that, it was gone. Mm-hmm. Next season, he didn't play the same. Yeah. But you still see Reeves where it wasn't just we it's almost made the over. playoffs. It's now the Olympics. Like mm-hmm. this is just a boost up to the next. He's in a 50 40 90 club for, for the Olympics right now. It's hard. Yeah, it's, it's like hard as shit. For, he's efficient as fuck. He can handle the ball. He doesn't turn it over that much. And he hustles on defense. Right. It's like this. He's got a conscious eye also. It, it, it's, it's 100% true that because he's white, he doesn't get the shine that he may deserve. Right. Because 100%. I was like, look at this little white boy out here trying to do some shit. He ain't, yeah. Let's see what he's got. And he's motherfucking showing us. But it, look, there's every few years you got somebody like that. Like mm-hmm. Steve Nash came out and everybody was trying to doubt him. Nigga was fucking on fire. Mm-hmm. Dirk, Dirk, like when he came up, everybody was trying to say the same shit. So you're right. There's a lot of astigmatism where they say white players can't really ball. Mm-hmm. But now you got... Reeves putting up numbers in the 50s. It's like, come on, bro. Like, you can't keep denying shit. Mm -hmm. Give people a shine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's dope that he had this chance right now. Yeah, no, it is. So it is. It's. I. I want to see how it's going to carry over to next year. Who? What was? Um. I'm forgetting his name right now. Duke's coach that used to be the Olympic coach. coach. Yeah, Coach K. Mm -hmm. I want. I wish I would have been able to see how he would have played under Coach K. Yeah, that's another, like, to get a tutelage of Coach K, that's fucking pretty awesome, man, because that's the dude that's been around basketball for, what, 60 years? Yeah. He's been coaching for 60 years and has been successful in many different decades. He knows how to adapt. He truly understands basketball, and he understands where basketball is going. So if, so, you, got yeah, an old, if you got an old mind with a youthful body, kind of like what you were just saying earlier, where it's like, man, everybody says, like, I wish I would have been able to know back mm-hmm. then. If you got that. Cold. If you got those answers, you can right. really do some shit. So if he had Coach K knowledge and just kicks off the beginning of his career like that, he's just been a fucking monster. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, interesting, man. If he could truly blossom and, and sustain that third guy for the Lakers. Yeah. You know, you have it. Two things need to happen. AD needs to be the guy. Yeah. It's- it cannot not be Braun no more. It can't be Braun. It should not be Braun at all. Bron that boy be needs the to be playing right like now. 28 minutes. Rest him. Let him be Superman in the playoffs. He's getting fucking old, bro. Yeah. It's not fair to uh, assume that he's going to be Superman at 39 years old. Yeah. AD needs to really take the reins, be healthy, you know, knock mm-hmm. on wood that no stupid shit happens. Uh, last year was fluke injuries. Wasn't more like soft tissue shit where he just, ah, I hurt my shit. He really was fucking his shit up. Right. And then one of them was unfortunate. Someone slid into his knee and shit. So I want him to be healthy and really put up a super dynamic season, maybe play like 70 games minimum. Then two, Austin Reeves has to blossom into that third guy very strongly. That third guy that could kind of be the two if you need him to be right. on certain nights. Because if those two things happen, one, that, that's going to leave Braun to be fresh come playoff time. And then also D'Angelo Russell is the fourth scorer on your team. Right. That's crazy. D'Lo, but, D'Lo dropped 15 on you in five but you minutes. you see, now you created a dynamic where even if LeBron can miss an entire game, LeBron can miss an entire week. If he gets we, injured, we, could, we, we could, still got a three. Yes, yeah. we could deal with it, bro. And then you got Gabe Vincent, you know, coming over from the heat. He's going to 
bring that heat culture, playoff mentality. He started throughout the playoffs, played fucking damn good. And then uh, this team is deep. That's yeah. like there's the one the shocking thing that happened in the uh, in the post. I mean, in the uh, off season was nobody threw a contract to Austin Reeves because they thought their money was going to get tied up and they weren't going to be able to fill their roster out. That benefited the Lakers. There were rumors that the Rockets or the Spurs was going to throw $100 million at them. Shit. Lakers got them for 56. That saved us, you know, 12, 13, 14 million dollars per right, year. Right, just to be able to balance the team. Which out. that money can now go to Rui Hachimura, it can right. go to D'Angelo Russell. Like the 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 team that we have right now is it could be special, bro, if everybody's healthy or some you know healthy-ish. This team could be really good. This is one of the deeper teams that we've had in a minute in terms of anybody could get it going in all in all and different they still areas got age of the game. For it too. Yeah, it, for, right. it could be good now and later. Right. Bron comes off the books. Now we got fifty million dollars to go throw at somebody. Right. Fifty million dollars with this team minus Bron is still looking really fucking nice. Because we still got the three. Mm-hmm. Because right. Austin Austin Reeves locked up four years on. This is kind of like when uh, Steph Curry signed that that cheap ass contract that he outplayed. Unanimous. How MVP. much did he sign for? He, he it was like three years, thirty million dollars. Fuck. Because he had them ankle problems. Yeah. That's in That's how they were able to go keep Draymond, keep Clay, and then go get Kevin Durant. It's because of the cheap contract that he was right. on and how he Damn, lost. Damn, I didn't know that that's how much he signed for. That's like, yeah, okay. man. So it's it's interesting. A lot that, is hanging on Austin Reeves, bro. It's like he's going to be the answer to where well, if Braun could potentially fight for another The NBA also has the benefit right now because they don't have a cap on the teams. You know what I mean? They got a cap. How much is their cap? I don't know what it is, but it, they got a cap. And they it's actually, not like the NFL cap. So it used to be very different to where if you if you uh, surpass the cap, now you got to pay a luxury tax. Right. Which if you're that's why the bigger markets were able to outbid the smaller teams because they're like, shit, we'll pay the luxury tax, which is a multiplier on the dollar that they surpass. Yeah. I don't know the multiplier, but they're like, fuck it, we'll pay that shit. But now starting this year. The hard tax got way harder. Okay, where, I didn't know if they changed the hard tax. Yeah, okay. yeah. So teams are are now really strict to that to that cap space or a little over. You know what I'm saying? Based on bird rights and 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 re-signing your own players and shit like that. Yeah, you ain't gonna sign some free agent and go over that motherfucking cap because now it's like say you go five mil over the cap now you owe. 80 million dollars because of that five million dollars yeah fuck it's, that exactly they were like man fuck that I, I don't want you that bad but right exactly because I didn't <laughs> so that's what I was I didn't know that they started that for this season mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so it's, it's, it's gonna that's balance dope. out a little bit so because we got too many all-star teams right now where it's just really like, fucking look at the, the Suns league. I always right. wonder like how they got Bill Booker KD and Aiton that's a lot of you got three max con four max contracts. But on you the got team? like six teams that you know is going to be in the finals every year. True. I mean, that's what happens when you get them superstars, them but true superstars. You've got that's what I'm saying. These all star teams, like the like when we were just talking about um, when they had KD, when they had Draymond, when they had that was Clay. a super team. That, that was, was an all time team. That, w- that was an Olympic team. They could have went to the Olympics so they, just the Warriors. They kind of took the fun out of basketball because that was like if they don't get hurt. Nobody will stop them. Right. And then what did they do? They went out one, two times, and then went out and got fucking DeMarcus Cousins. Yes. It's right. like, are you serious? People forget about DeMarcus right. Cousins. That uh, If he didn't, <laughs> homie blew out his quad, his knee, his ankle, everything. But if he would have stayed healthy and everybody, DeMarcus Cousins, KD, Clay, Steph, yeah, that was everybody team. stretching, everybody could pass good. DeMarcus Cousins at the center position was getting four assists, five assists. Right. Draymond's passing. Draymond's the only shooter on but the that's the person kind of that person that shoot. made LeBron leave Cleveland after that is because you got this team that's going to keep going to the finals every single year, hey, and he, he doesn't have one. any support. But he said we beat him once. He said, "Fuck it, I, that's it. <laughs> we ain't gonna do it again." <laughs> that's it. Is one guy they fought again. for that shit, blood, sweat, and hey, tears. No like, lie, that was, that was one of that was my second favorite finals I ever watched. What's your uh, first favorite? Oh man, that 2000, uh, 2010 Lakers Celtics. Yes, yeah, yeah. That shit, I almost cried. Yeah. Like it was so intense. That every, was personal. Every yes, after they beat the fuck out of us, right? Because two years earlier by thirty some points. This is when this is what I'm talking about. That's the Rondo era. Where's Rondo? You got Garnett. You got Paul Pierce, and um, it was 
Kobe had a. Uh, it was Kobe on the team. It was Odom. It was um, Kwame Bynum. Brown too. No, Bynum. No, Bynum, Bynum was on the team. Gasol. Yeah, it was Bynum. Yeah. Luke Walton. Yeah, Luke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's Sasha all. Sasha Chich. Jordan Farmar. Yeah. You know, we had a squad, bro. We had a squad. Like it, the, the defensive teams that both of those teams put out because Bynum was a defensive guy Pau Gasol was very underrated on the defensive end yeah Kobe was all team first defense probably every like nine years he but did Pau, it Pau and Kobe had that chemistry Pau, but, Kobe, Bynum and then run our test yeah come on bro that defense oh, is no, fuck yeah. and Derek Fisher is snappy on defense too that defense is crazy then on the flip side you got Rondo you got Ray Allen, who was like, he had no choice but to play great defense. Yeah. Paul Pierce, underrated. KG, all-time defender. Then you got Kendrick Perkins. You got Tony Allen coming off the motherfucking bench. Tony Allen coming off the bench, crazy. one of the greatest fucking guard defenders all time. So what, that that like, Those teams were gangster. They were beating the shit out of each other. What I think about, it too, is before that, Garnett was also about to end up on the Lakers. He was, man. You so know the it, stories that came out. He was like, man, I tried to call Kobe because I was trying to go to the Lakers. Yeah. Kobe didn't answer his calls. But I almost, as much as I would have wanted KG to go, and we would have got at least two. That's what I'm saying. We probably would have got three. That. They probably would have got three. Because if KG didn't go to the Celtics, who was fucking with? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That whole Celtics... That rain would not have happened but, if KG would so, end up at so the Lakers. So peep this though, peep how I think we won. We didn't get get KG. They wanted Lamar Odom and Andrew Bynum for KG. No, that's, oh, that's shit. a big loss. Shit, yeah, no. We gave up two popsicle sticks and a rubber band for Pau Gasol, and then what ended up being Marcus Hall. Yeah. But we gave up Kwame Brown and Aaron McGee and Javaris Crittenton. Dude, does anybody do good basketball fans know who the fuck they are? So what made me mad though was when um, when we traded Shannon Brown and Trevor Reza, because I so, feel like they had a promising future at the time. Yeah, yeah. If they I, would, I, I know think how their careers a, went when he when Reza went over to the Rockets. Trevor Reza was playing great too. Yeah, he uh, a lot of people forget that Trevor Reza was not that three point shooter no. that, that he was in the latter part of his career. When he came to the Lakers, he could not shoot the ball. Nope. He was driving to the basket, banging basically Ron Artest minus a three. And then uh, he developed the three because of the role that he was on. I have a lot of respect for Trevor Reza. He was that dude bust his ass. He was a very good fit for the Lakers. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. But if, if he would have stayed, what he would have been. But if you could say, all right, look, Kobe's getting a little older, uh, Gasol's getting a little bit older. We just lost to the Celtics. They're coming back. Yeah, we beat the Magic, but I don't think the Magic was as good as the Celtics teams was. If you have an opportunity to go from Trevor Reza to Ron Artest, you fucking pull that trigger. Oh, of course. Of you course. have to pull that trigger. Even though we got a little bit older Ron Artest and got maybe like four or five years out of him versus Trevor Reza was in the league for fucking 10 years later. Yeah. It's all good, though. We had a double down, and I respect it. I respect it, was it. A, it was a thug decision to make, man. It's a tough one. Because yeah. me at the time, I was like, yo, we shouldn't even let Reza go. Like that yeah. was, oh, I was the same way. I was like, I was like it, man, you got to figure it out. Keep that motherfucker somehow. Right. I was like, bro, get like, Ron and keep him somehow. Build shit. him up. Like this is he could be the future of the Lakers. Mm-mm. I don't know about the future of the Lakers, but, but like a very solid a core piece. member. Yeah, he could yeah, be a core sure. member. You yeah. know what I mean? That's like, gonna be pushing the whole thing. But um, there's a time and place where you start seeing like, okay, I get it. Like when we let go of Gasol, like it's like I get it. He's getting older. Yeah, it's Let part of the business. Derek Fisher, like he's yeah. getting older. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's no point in keeping them on anymore. And but then there's sometimes with these players, they have like a whole boost in the moment, like what we talked about, Andre Iguodala, mm-hmm. when he left he from went the, to the Warriors, and yeah. he went to the Warriors. Bro, like that was just like a Finals whole MVP. Stint. Like, or you know, one of my fa- one of my favorite players all time, just because I have so much respect for him, Brook Lopez. Brook Lopez is a defending 3 and D center in this league, and he's probably top three at it. Damn. 3 and D center in the league. People forget when, when Brooke Lopez came into the league, he was not rebounding, he was not playing defense, and he was a badass interior offensive threat at the center position. What team is he in right now? Uh, Bucks. Okay. He almost won defensive of the player of the year last year. He's getting Shit. votes for defensive player of the year at like 35 years old. The homie completely switched his game from an inside post player that doesn't play defense and doesn't really rebound to I now shoot threes very fucking well. I am now valuable in the latter years of my career, and now I'm a block shots and rebound. 
That shit's hard. I have so much nasty. respect because it, it shows the work that he fucking put in. Go look at his stats. That motherfucker was shot no threes until about nine years into his career. Then he was just letting that bitch rip. That's shooting like thirty seven percent at the center position. That's how you have that's longevity, man. Yes, that's that's deep. That's yes, just deep. man. I I have so much respect for players like that. That's what um. So when I remember seeing the video where Kobe was talking about um Shaq. And he was saying Shaq could be the greatest player of all time. If he wasn't lazy. Right. Yeah. Because he's just a dominant force. So, like, just thinking about that. Imagine Put if Shaq Put Kobe's was... mind in Shaq, and he would be better than Wilt and more dominant than Wilt. Right. Because it just wasn't fair. Look at the videos. The big guys were, like, getting – if I went and played basketball with, like, some six, seven, six or seventh graders, that's like Shaq, bro. But Shaq would be worse because he can dunk. I can't dunk on them little motherfuckers. No, I even it's some hoopers in middle school. What I'm talking about like fifth graders. I gotta be out there with the fourth <laughs> so and fifth some graders hoopers in middle on the little courts. <laughs> you know, I'm playing center defense, just me. Six foot tall court. Yeah, just fuck with bringing it <laughs> back. So man, give me your projection. What do you think the Lakers are gonna do this year? Um I know the ceiling is the championship. I think they're still What's gonna, your realistic I, No, I think they're gonna still do good um for the Western Conference. I think they're going to be fine there. I don't think they're going to make it to the finals, though. Not this year. I think it's going to be another two years before they make it to the finals. 40-year-old Bron? I don't think Bron's going to be there anymore. No? I think Bron's going to be done next season. That's going to be interesting. I don't think he's going to stay there to 40. That's going to be interesting. Like, the near term and five years from now is going to be so drastically different for the Lakers. It's going to be very interesting to see what's going to transpire, man. But I can see the Lakers definitely going to, like, the Western Conference Finals. The Nuggets, even though they lost uh, a couple solid pieces in their team this offseason, they still have one hell of a fucking offensive line, uh, starting lineup. And Joe Kick is just that motherfucker. He's that motherfucker, man. Um, that's another situation to where you have a second-round pick become the best player in the league. Yeah, That's crazy. That's crazy right there. So they're going to be hard to take down. You know, they're the defending chance for a reason, and until they're proven otherwise, we'll see what's going to happen. But the Lakers have an opportunity because of uh, the depth. They have a full training camp offseason to go through together, get that chemistry down, know where everybody's going to be in place before it happens versus just out there balling. You know, there's a big difference. Um, I don't know so what goes on between the Lakers offseason and when the season starts, but they just like play completely different. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you might see, like, uh, the year that they had Jeremy Lin, too. Mm-hmm. Like, they're... Tough times. Tough they, time. Man, like... <laughs> but they'll have, like, these rough games, but then, like, they'll just come out the gates in the beginning of the season just, like, fucking up for the first few games, and then they just, like, throw the streak on fire. Because people forget that not all of them are professionals. Some of the motherfuckers fatting out of shape. Oh, yeah. Knocking off the rust. James Harden just left the strip club. He's eating chicken wings before practice and shit. Yeah. So it's like, they're human beings. Not everybody's locked in like Kobe and shit. So that's what it is. Yeah. They got that Shaq-itis. Well, Damn. man, hey, <laughs> Josh, I appreciate you jumping on the yes, pod, bro. Man, it was a fire ass fun, conversation. Man. I definitely got to get you back on when the season's actually rolling. Yes. So yes. we could, like, really have some shit to talk about basketball man. wise. But uh, it's looking good this season for the Lakers. Hopefully, everybody can stay, stay healthy. But for you, you know, I, I wish you the best going forward with music, Thank with you. writing, with fucking acting, everything, bro. It's, you're doing, doing big things. When I was on set with you, it was a good time. Really fuck with this shit that you're doing. Um, but every time I have somebody get on the podcast for the first time, I sit back and I shut up. You could uh, basically plug yourself, you know, let everybody know what you got coming. I know you got uh, the track with Benny dropping on the first. So, yeah. You know, whatever you want people to know, this your time. Man, thank you, Levi, man. And honestly, I'm excited to see everything that you're about to do with your career that's just going to keep going. I just see a lot of prosperity. It's just going to keep blo- blooming, man. That's the only thing. The harvest is right, man. You're in a good spot. And, um, to everybody, if you want to see anything else that I'm doing, you can follow me at Instagram at um, IDK Row Official. And uh, yeah, there's the album's going to be coming out September 25th. That's going to be my birthday. And then the film is going to be coming out in October for Condemned. Hey, and we got some more yeah. films coming out too, man. So we're going to be cranking them out. I'm excited. Oh, and TV shows, The Shop. So, guys, thank you guys. Uh, Follow along and what's going on. It's going to be a fun ride. 
Yeah, man. Appreciate you, bro. And September 25th, I'm definitely going to be looking out for the album. Definitely going to slap that thing, bro. Please, man. Please. Definitely want to uh, tap in and support and, and, and see if I fuck with your music. Shit, I oh, haven't listened man. to it yet. It's, so it's got I'm, a theme to it, too. Like, it's like a Western thing. Like, there's like acting in it. It feels like you're watching a movie. Movie. Nice. It's so going to have a bunch of videos that's going to tell the story. It's the skits in nice. between it. So, like, you're here. It, man. You're going to love the album. It's good. That's, all right. I'll get you back on, uh, back on the pod. We'll talk about uh, the album. We'll talk about Condemned and we'll talk about basketball. Bet. So, Perfect. Hey, man. Appreciate it again. That sums it up for this episode of Talk Smack with Mac, man. We're out. Let's talk smack. What?